Hi, my name is Christian Hyde. I'm the managing director at Risk360. I help oversee our ISO 27001 practice. And this series is on ISO 27001 Explained, where we cover all of the 114 controls related to ISO 27001. And in this series, we're going to cover the control objective number eight uh, around asset management, specifically 8.1 about responsibility for assets. So in this control objective, there are four controls. And although there's not many controls, asset management can become a little bit complex because there's a lot of levels to asset management. So when we go into control 8.1.1, that's around inventory of assets. And this is where it is the most complicated because you have to decide how you're going to inventory assets and what you consider an asset. So there's a lot of layers to consider. So for example, endpoint devices might be an asset. Data might be an asset. Systems and applications might be an asset. IT infrastructure also might be an asset. And for each of those, there might be a different strategy and even a different owner to appropriately inventory those assets. So for example, with endpoints, you might want to perform an asset inventory via your mobile device management solution. If you're in cloud infrastructure, such as in AWS, there might be some tools in that platform to inventory assets and so on and so forth. So you have to consider for yourself, what is your asset strategy? How do you label assets? What do you consider assets? And who are the owners of those various assets? And are you going to use automated or manual means to maintain asset inventories? I'll talk about that here in just a second. I'm gonna show you an example and a policy for some of those decision points. Uh, the next control here is ownership of assets and acceptable use of assets. So these are uh, somewhat related because ownership of assets and acceptable use of assets will be determined by that inventory and your asset management strategy. So for, for example, earlier I mentioned endpoint devices. So who owns the endpoint devices? Who's the owner of the asset class? When it comes to infrastructure or applications, who are the owners of those systems and applications? And as you develop that strategy, you have to assign owners and they'll be in charge of that inventory. And then when it comes to something like invent or endpoint uh, devices and laptops, the person who uses that machine might be the owner. And there's many tools that you can use to help with this inventory and with this management. And I'll point that out just here in just a second. And then acceptable use of assets, that would usually uh, be an, an acceptable use policy where you might define something like for endpoint devices and laptops, here's how you're allowed to use them. Maybe they're only um, allowed to be used for business purposes or, and you can't browse the internet or, or use them as a personal device, for example. Uh, I'll show you an acceptable use policy here in just a second as well. And then 8.1.4 is around return of assets. So if those are out in the field, uh, take a laptop, how do you get those back? How are they returned to the business? If you are talking about data, um, how do you return that data back, uh, back to the employer at the end of the day? So that could be in the form of USB drives or um, uh, even hard copies in some cases. And you gotta think about how to get those assets back to the employee. So that's the universe of um, control objective 8.1 about around responsibility for assets and the four controls there. I do want to hop into a, an example policy to show you how we're handling some of this. So this is RISC-360's template um, information security policy. If you're a RISC-360 client, you have access to this, and we would also help customize this and maybe even break these policies out into multiple policies uh, to develop a very specific asset management and inventory process for you. But again, the key thing here is coming up with your asset management strategy in terms of uh, the decision points around endpoints, infrastructure, network equipment, software, and SaaS platforms, and how you're going to inventory each of those and who the owners are and who you're going to have to collaborate with from an information security pro uh, perspective to either automate the inventory of those or develop manual inventories and keep those up to date. Again, asset management is key to your information security policy and also one of those deceivingly complex things to get right. The last thing I'll mention is that if you're thinking about why asset management is a critical part of your information security program, the theory in the information security world is that if you do not have an inventory of your assets or an awareness of which assets exist, you can't secure them. A, an easy example might be if you've deployed a laptop to the field and you have an employee using that for business purposes, but you do not have an inventory of it, you don't know it exists, well, you can't really secure that asset. So if it's compromised via you know, malware or something like that, 
that exposes the business to a lot of risk. And you can take that same philosophy to infrastructure, to the whole, uh, whole of the organization. So having an inventory of those assets and being able to appropriately secure them and have a strategy around security of those assets is critical to your information security policy and foundational. So that, uh, in a nutshell, is an overview of calls or uh, requirement 8.1 about responsibility for assets. And if you enjoyed this video and you found it valuable, you can visit risk360.com or continue watching this playlist and we'll uh, keep moving.